Bo Bishop, Anthony Rothman, Tuesday edition of the program. Probably heard us talk yesterday. I certainly mentioned uh, all the recruits that were on the field at the Ohio State-Nebraska game. Um, boy, I, I, I think I counted five or six in the top 50 in the country. There may have been more, uh, but this was a big weekend for Ohio State, big weekend for Urban Meyer, big weekend for recruiting, uh, maybe the biggest of the year. Uh, to perhaps co-sign that, we bring on our great friend of the program, Bill Curlick, Bucknuts recruiting expert. Bill, thank you so much for taking the time. Did I oversell it? Was that as big a win as it as I perceived it to be for Urban uh, Meyer in recruiting? Yeah, I, I don't think you oversold it at all. It was, uh, you know, it was just a great night for Ohio State on the field. You know, beating Nebraska sixty-three to thirty-eight, and then doing it in front of, as you described, a, a, just a spectacular group of recruits. I don't think it could have gone much better for Ohio State. The weather was good. The, you know, the atmosphere was great, and everything was pretty much picture perfect. Talking with Bill Curlick, Bucknuts.com, recruiting analyst, been covering Buckeye recruiting for a long time. Urban Meyer, Bill, in almost every press conference, talks about we're not there yet. we got to recruit some guys to come in here and, and make some and, and really take this team to the next level. I look at this recruiting class that he's putting together, and I look at guys like Cam Burrows, Ezekiel Elliott, Jalen Marshall. They were all at the game on Saturday. They're all those type of difference maker guys, or we perceive them to be. Is he getting it done the way he needs to and wants to get it done in recruiting? And specifically, Bill, I'm talking about at the skill positions, the receivers, the running backs, the home run hitters. Yeah, I think he is. I think that there's still some work to be done. I mean, you know, he's got some great players coming in. He's got uh, Ezekiel Elliott is just having a spectacular season, a running back. Jalen Marshall's just a tremendous athlete. I think he's going to be a – Percy Harvin type guy at Ohio State, although he plays quarterback for Middletown. Uh, J.T. Barrett, one of the country's top couple of quarterbacks. Unfortunately, he went down with an injury this past weekend. But, but uh, yeah, I think I think Coach Meyer's doing a great job of bringing those types of players into Ohio State. But he still, you know, it's, it's not going to happen all at once. He still needs a uh, hopefully another great wide receiver or two in the class and uh uh you know on the defensive side of the ball he'd like to bring in a great safety von bell so still some work to be done but it's all going in the right direction hey bill really quick uh you mentioned the barrett injury the quarterback out of wichita falls texas a lot of people consider him the best dual threat quarterback in the country uh just kind of elaborate on that how serious is the injury well, unfortunately, it looks pretty serious right now. He uh, he had an MRI over the weekend and came back saying that he has a torn ACL, torn MCL, and torn meniscus. Um, yeah, he he feels like it's not that serious. He's walking. He feels uh, pretty uh, pretty good about things. No pain. So he's going to go ahead and get a second opinion on Wednesday and see where that takes him. But uh, the initial diagnosis, you know, wasn't particularly good. He. Uh, as of now, you know, he's not going to play in the immediate future, and he knows that uh, depending on what happens on Wednesday with the next opinion, you know, the next time he suits up could be for Ohio State. Well, Bill, obviously, the, you know, the, the upside there is he has time on his side. He, he wasn't going to obviously start right away, and hopefully he can recover. Um, any more details? on? I know Bo mentioned, you know, one of the top dual-threat quarterbacks in the country. Where did you have him in that category? Is, is he considered the best? Well, I think he's one of the two best, and uh, you know the exciting thing about him is that um, you know, he, he can run the ball effectively. He's not quite like a Braxton Miller. You know, there, there aren't many of those out there as far as running the ball and being elusive. But he is a very good thrower. He's uh, mechanically sound and uh, puts up great numbers. Uh, it is high school. He has put up great numbers. So, uh, you know, he's a guy that really fits very, very well into Urban Meyer's offense. You know, you want to be able to throw the ball, but you've got to be able to run the ball effectively, too, and certainly he can do that. You know, we, we'd like to buy into the old star system and all that, and it's been created in this era, whether you're a three-, four-, five-star type kid, and we know kids can be uh, late bloomers and that sort of thing, and some kids don't live up to the hype. But if you want to look at it on paper right now for us for the Buckeyes 2013 commits, who is considered the top player in that class? Well, I think there'd be several that I'd put at the top. Certainly, uh, I'd put Jalen Marshall up there. I've just, I just, I think he is just about as spectacular an athlete as you're going to find out there. He uh, plays quarterback again, but I think he'll be a receiver, Percy Arvin type guy for Ohio State. Uh, Joey Bosa from St. Thomas Aquinas High School in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. 
just a great, great prospect. He plays defensive end and nose guard for St. Thomas Aquinas. I think he'll be a defensive tackle or defensive end for the Buckeyes. And, uh, yeah, I think he's got tremendous potential. Ezekiel Elliott has just blown up this season. Uh, Marcus Ball, one of the top tight ends in the country, should fit in perfectly. They, they think he could be an Aaron Hernandez type guy for Ohio State. You got Cam Burroughs down at uh, uh, Trotwood Madison as an outstanding cornerback that might end up as a safety at Ohio State. And then uh, Eli Woodard, cornerback uh, out of New Jersey, an outstanding prospect. So there's there's a pretty long list. And one other, Michael Hill, I just talked to his high school coach this morning who just raised about him, a defensive tackle from South Carolina, just raised about his potential. Nationally speaking, is the kid you just mentioned out of New Jersey, Eli Woodard, is he the top-rated guy for Ohio State in that class? Um, you know, again, I, I don't know that uh, – I think it's hard to differentiate who who is one, two, and three, but just because there's so many talented prospects in this class. But I think uh, I think you can make a good case for Eli Woodard being in the top two or three. Talking with Bill Kerlick, Bucknuts dot com recruiting expert. Bill, what I always think is interesting, and and what I look at most when I think of uh, a team from the north going into the south and getting somebody out of there, I always think to myself, all right, who offered the kid from the south? By that I mean, if you're pulling a kid out of Florida, did Florida State, Florida, Alabama, LSU, Georgia offer the kid? Were they hard on the kid? The question becomes, is he getting kids out of those places? As I look at this class, I'm seeing in several cases he is. There was a kid who was committed to Florida State, a receiver out of the Central Florida area who last week decommitted from Florida State, is now supposedly an Ohio State lean. Is Urban Meyer having the impact in the South that is needed for him to create an SEC team in the Big Ten? Well, I don't think there's any question. You know, you, uh, you're talking about Tony Stevens, the wide receiver from Orlando, He, uh, which, by the way, he is back to being a Florida State commitment right now. But he is going to visit Ohio State, so we'll see what happens there. Uh, but, you know, you look at Joey Bosa, for instance, um, defensive end from Fort Lauderdale. You know, he's a kid that everybody wanted. He, uh, he had offers from Alabama, Florida, Auburn, Florida State, all of them, and he picked Ohio State. You know, that's, that's the kind of kid that uh, Urban Meyer w- wants to get, as you alluded to. He's not getting the guys necessarily that have uh, landed offers from mid-level southern schools. He's getting the guys, in many cases, Bosa being one of them, that have landed offers from the Alabamas and the Auburns and the Floridas. Uh, same way with Michael Hill. You know, he had offers from, from everybody. Um, you know, South Carolina certainly broke their heart when uh, he decided to go to Ohio State rather than South Carolina, but he had offers from all the big-time programs in the South. So, you know, that's kind of the key, you know, not just getting the good players from the South, but getting the truly great players from down there. And, and Urban Meyer's doing it. And I think, uh, you know, I think 2014's got a chance to be even better, to be honest. Well, let me take you there. Bill Curlick, recruiting expert, bucknuts.com here on Bishop and Rothman. Uh, we know what the Nebraska game did. Bo mentioned that and how many recruits he saw. What are you anticipating for the Michigan game this year? Do they have enough sideline passes to go around? How big could that be for 2013-2014 class? Well, you know, as I was in Ohio Stadium on Saturday night, I remarked that Looking at the recruits at that game against Nebraska, it was almost like a Michigan game because you always expect the Michigan game right. uh, to be the recruiting game. And, and Saturday night was almost like that as far as how many prospects were there and the talent level. Having said that, the Michigan game is going to be even better. You know, the, the list of prospects I've already got for uh, being in attendance that game is spectacular. You've got Raekwon McMillan, uh, one of the top 2014 linebackers in the country. Dante Booker, the same, same type of thing, one of the top 2014 linebackers in the country. Deshaun Hand, arguably the number one defensive end in the country 2014 um, you know Thaddeus Snodgrass a wide receiver from here in Ohio uh, you know the list just goes on and on Jabril Peppers one of the country's top 2014 prospects all those prospects are scheduled to visit Ohio State or say they're going to be at the Michigan game Damon Webb a player that uh, Brady Hoke would dearly like to keep at home in the state of Michigan he's going to be at the game country's top one of the country's top cornerbacks Deshaun Watson, you know, it just goes on and on. It is going to be a spectacular recruiting weekend for the Buckeyes. Real quickly, if you had to kind of speculate or ballpark a number for me, how many four- or five-star recruits could be at that Michigan game? Uh, Well, you know, I'm I'm sure that there will be 
easily in excess of 50 prospects at the game. You know, and I think that you know when you look at their rankings, they're going to be all now. Nah, they're they're going to be a high majority of them are going to be four or five star kids. So I think you're you could be looking anywhere from 50 to 75 of the top players in the country at that game. Now oh, that'll be pretty impressive if he pulls that off for sure. Uh, Bill, I'll get you out of here on this one, and it's one that's um, I think directly impacted here in central Ohio. I know a lot of high school football coaches, um, they might not say it publicly, but they're a little sour that Urban maybe isn't going after some of the local kids. The central Ohio kids, the Ohio kids, is not as aggressive as maybe Jim Trestle and the previous staff was. How does Urban have to balance that? Because Trestle's mantra was always put a, put a rope around the state of Ohio and then cherry pick elsewhere. Urban has a different philosophy, of course, although he is still getting the best players in the state of Ohio at this point. But how does he balance that with Brady Hoke, who seems so willing to come in here and take the kids from Ohio? Well, one of the things to consider also is that Ohio State's uh, working under scholarship reductions right now. You know, they're at 82, and they're going to be at 82 next year and so forth. So, you know, they, they can't afford – to take a questionable or a, a you know a maybe type guy, they've got to get uh, the best guys. They've got to evaluate correctly because they can't miss on as many as when you have the full complement of 85 scholarships. So, you know, having said that, there you know Urban Meyer's philosophy is he's going to bring in the best players across the country, no matter where they're from. You're going to start in Ohio. He's going to always go for the top very top level guys in Ohio, but he just, he's not going to go for a, a mid tier guy just because he's in Ohio and he wants to build, you know, the very best program, you know, and, he, and I think generally speaking, high school coaches are going to understand that, that, uh, you know, this is urban Myers program and it's his job on the line. It's his, it's his job to win national championships. And you're not going to do that unless you're bringing in great, great players. You're not going to be able to compete with the Alabama's, uh, of the world, the, the organs of the world, if you don't have great players. And he's got to do uh, whatever he needs to do to get those players to Ohio State. Bill Curlick, nobody does it better than you, buddy. We appreciate you taking the time. Thank you very much, pal. Hey, hey thanks, Bo. Thanks, Anthony.